Hey everyone, scaling model shows how the effect of homophily that operates at a local level leads to some interesting global patterns in the network. In this video, we are going to implement this model and we will observe the patterns that emerge. Before we start the implementation, I will give you a brief of the model. Let's assume that there is a population of people and these people are one of the two types. That is, every person is either of type 0 or type 1. Further assume that these people live in a city which is like a grid. That is, there are cells in this grid where these people live, uh, just like this. Also, some cells of this grid have people, whereas some cells will be empty. In other words, every cells, cell will either have a person of type 0 or a person of type 1 or it will be empty. For example, like this, as you can see, every cell either has a red node or you can say red person or a green person or it is empty, correct? Now, a cell's neighbors are the cells that touch it, including the diagonal cells. So, you can imagine that a cell that is not on the boundary will have eight neighbors. For example, if you look at this scenario, this red node is an internal node that is not on the boundary. So every node which is not on the boundary will have eight neighbors like this. The red uh, person uh, has basically the cell that has red person has eight cells which are its neighboring cells. Similarly, if you look at the, the boundary cells, uh, there can be two cases. First case could be uh, where the cell is a corner cell, like here. The red person is staying in a cell which is a corner cell. So this cell has three neighbors, as you can see here. Uh, the other kinds of boundary uh, cells can be like this, which are not the corners. So as you can see, this red uh, person, which is residing in this cell, has five neighbors. I think it's not difficult to understand that we can convert this whole scenario into a graph where the cells are the nodes and there is an edge between two cells if they are neighbors on this grid. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, we are going to analyze this grid using a network. Now if you look at a metropolitan city where there are people from different states of the country Everyone tends to or rather prefers to stay in an area where there are more people from their own state. So that, that practically happens. We are, in a, we are going to uh, apply the same scenario in our given grid. Um, so the people in our model wish to have at least some other people of their own type as neighbors. Now, as an analogy, if you look at a metropolitan city, for example, uh, where there are people from different states of the country, everyone tends to or rather prefers to stay in an area where there are more people from their own state. In a similar fashion, the people in our model wish to have at least some other people of their own type as neighbors. So what we'll do is, we'll assume a common threshold T for each person. If a person discovers that it is surrounded by fewer than T people of its own type, he tends to move to a new cell. Such a person is called unsatisfied with his current location. As an example, if we set the threshold T to be 3 for, uh, for instance, and if you look at this node uh, labeled 1, it has 8 neighbors as you can see, and out of these 8 neighbors, uh, four neighbors are of its own type and the rest four uh, neighbors are of different type types. So uh, since the threshold is three, it has more than three neighbors of its own type. So we will call this uh, node one to be a satisfied node. If you look at the uh, other scenario, for example, if you look at this node uh, labeled one, it's of green type and it has eight neighbors. Uh, out of these eight neighbors, uh, four neighbors are of uh, the different type and four neighbors are of the same type as the neighbor as the node one. Now, since um, as an example, if we set the threshold T to be equal to three, let's say, and we look at the node which is labeled one here, as you can see, there are eight neighbors and out of the eight neighbors, uh, four neighbors are of different type and four neighbors are of the same type as the given node 1. 
since the threshold t is equal to 3 and this node 1 has more than 3 neighbors of its own type we will call this uh, this node 1 to be a satisfied node right and if we take one more example and if you look at this node which is labeled 2 here uh, it again has 8 neighbors out of these 8 neighbors uh, 6 neighbors are of different types and 2 neighbors are of the same type as the node 2 and the threshold t we have set to be 3 since this node 2 has lesser than uh, t neighbors of its own type this node 2 will be called an unsatisfied node now as i already explained uh, the unsatisfied nodes tend to move to new locations which are already empty and where they they are likely to be to be satisfied uh, there are uh, different versions of scaling model uh, in this context uh, for example in uh, in some of the versions the the unsatisfied nodes will move to uh, those locations where they are, where they are more likely to become satisfied or in other versions the unsatisfied nodes will move to any random location uh, so so there are different versions uh, which you can implement uh, another thing is that whenever a node moves from one cell to the other cell it affects other uh, neighboring nodes as well for example in this process some other nodes might might become satisfied some other nodes might become unsatisfied so it basically changes the uh, the scenario of the of the cell uh, of the uh, grid right uh, so in every iteration we choose uh, some unsatisfied nodes and we move them to new locations and the cell and the grid structure changes and this keeps on repeating and we, we can analyze uh, the structure that we get in the end uh, that is after a certain number of iterations. So this is what we are going to implement. We are going to implement the version of scaling model where the unsatisfied nodes move to uh, the random locations and uh, we are going to run several iterations of this process um, we are we are basically going to recalculate the unsatisfied nodes in every iteration because that is obviously required because uh, one shifting uh, affects the rest of the nodes as well so let's get started with the implementation now